Welcome back. As numbers come in tonight, let's zero in now on some of those key races. Joining us tonight from UCLA Luskin School of Public Affairs, veteran LA City Council, City County rather, leader Zeb uh, Yarla, Yarla Skowski and also Sarah <laughs> Sadwani, professor of public affairs there at Pomona College. Uh, thank you all so much for being here with us. Now, we just talked about CBS uh, calling Adam Schiff 44%, Steve Garvey 21%. Does that, does that surprise you? Uh, no, the, it's consistent with the polling that we've seen in the last couple of weeks, uh, and, and I think uh, uh, the shift uh, strategy of elevating Garvey, uh, making it a two-person race, uh, put Garvey in the second place. For, it could be even closer than that, but I think Porter is going to be the odd person out on this one. What do you think this does for um, you know for, for the candidate when when we, we get to November, and what do you see November looking like with these two? If this is the if this is a, what the final result is going to look like a matchup between Adam Schiff and a Republican Steve Garvey, then this race is over. Uh, the likelihood of California voters sending a a Republican into statewide office to serve as our senator is slim to none. Uh, so this if if this is ultimately what what the results are for from this election. This is a win for Adam Schiff. Yeah. And we were talking about this. This uh, what this does for um, the career. It catapults him not only into power, but a lot of visibility, especially heading into November. Well, Adam Schiff is a very uh, solid public official. Uh, he, he has a public service career that predates his pol political career. And I think he will land in the Senate uh, if he wins the Senate race, which I agree with Sarah. If it's him and Garvey, He's the odds-on favorite. Uh, he will Im immediately be an impact player, first because of his own intellect and his political skill, and also because he represents the biggest state in the union. Right. Along with Ag Alex Padilla, these are going to be two very powerful people in the Senate representing our state. Right. And you talked about uh, this with Garvey not having to run one TV ad and <laughs> just how, <laughs> how much yeah. uh, Porter uh, criticized him for that and said she was sort of blocked out and he yeah. didn't have to because of Schiff. Yeah, that's right. Adam Schiff was boxing out the other Democratic candidates, and he was really showing us the playbook for how to run in these top two primaries. Uh, of course, this is the, the, the jungle primary that we all talk about, uh, and we recognize that whoever hits those top two slots, this could have easily been two Democrats who advance after this primary election. But this strategy of Schiff's uh, constantly running on the airwaves, photos, images of Steve Garvey talking, talking about how he is so much like Trump, recognizing that there are portions of this state that still love Donald Trump. It really pushed Garvey into this into this position. Once again, win the U.S. Senate race here in California. This, we're talking about the full six-year term to replace the late Dianne Feinstein. The top two will face off in November. Uh, the top two right now, we're talking about uh, Schiff and Garvey. Now, in the partial term for the U.S. Senate race in California, the top two will face off in November. The winner of that election will then hold the seat for only two months until the end of the year before um, the, the, they take, the winner takes over. Now we want to talk about the L.A. County District Attorney's race, switching gears here. A lot of people watching this one closely bef because of George Gascon and also his progressive stand on crime. He wants another term and also has a very large field of 11 challengers, some who work right in his office. Uh, we were talking about this. Does this come become the perception a public safety. What do you think happens here? And does Gascon have to be careful not to uh, come in third? Well, I don't think he's going to come in third because uh, the first returns that are in, which will represent about a third of the total vote when it's all, all counted in the next couple of weeks, he's at 23, almost 24 uh, percent. I'm a little surprised that, it, that it's that high, but yeah. uh, because he didn't spend a lot of money and, and he was uh, attacked by all the other candidates. Uh, I think we'll have to wait until November to find out whether uh, he can uh, retain his job or not. He's going to be running, at least at, at the present, uh, uh, Hockman, who is at 17.5%, and if those, if those two remain in the, in the running, Hockman is going to be the conservative in the race, taking a very uh, hard-line position on, on criminal justice, and Gascon is a, a, you know, the progressive candidate, so it's going to be a real choice, not an echo in that, in that election come November. And we were talking about uh, most of the candidates talking about how they're going to reverse or overturn some of his policies, and we're also talking about a man, 51 percent disapproval, yeah. uh, and, and most, we were talking about this earlier, uh, for most politicians, you know, that may be, okay, out, out of the water, but uh, so what do you see as far as support there, and also what do you think this does for progressives? You know, 
Gascon came into this office four years ago on the heels of the, the murder of George Floyd and really riding this progressive wave, a reform wave, and he was the voice of change at that point in time. And since that time, we've seen a host of public safety concerns, the smash and grabs. This is, continues to be one of the hottest issues here in Los Angeles. Uh, and many were asking whether or not LA voters were going to, to come back and change their minds on this kind of reform. These early numbers are suggesting, no, they're not, that, that most likely Gascon's going to stay put, at least for now. And, and I would add just one thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the votes that have come in so far, these are the votes that people voted by mail over the last several weeks. Mm -hmm. It was an older, yep. whiter, uh, more affluent uh, electorate. Gascon is getting 23.76% of that vote. Uh, he may go up in the vote as the weeks go on. But make no mistake, uh, he is a very polarizing figure in the political arena. All the polls show that. Yeah. The people either, they have, everybody has an opinion about him, and the majority have a, not, not a good opinion of him. So uh, now, nobody knows Hockman yet. <laughs> They're going to know him between now and November, and we'll see how it plays out. But the demographic of electorates plays a huge role. And it'll right be there. a much bigger turnout, maybe triple what it, is to, what it was today. All right.